Wallahi, the believer should worry when you see what's happening to your brothers and sisters anywhere in the world. Is this the personal sin that I'm committing that's bringing about pain on the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? That's the extent to which the believers should be worried. Fathers, it is very important that to know that our children are looking at us. Our sons are looking at us. Whether you like it or not, whatever you do in the house, they're going to see that, particularly at a, at a young age, to maybe think that that is right or that is the right way to, to live a masculine life as a father, as a husband. So here he says, do, at, do whatever it is you were ordered to do, you will find me of the patient. Are we patient with our parents? How do we accept what Allah has prescribed upon us? When we see the commandments of Allah, do we accept it wholeheartedly and submit like how Ibrahim والسلام, submitted to the commandment of Allah, how Ismail submitted to the commandment of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. Welcome back to Quran 30 for 30. The question from yesterday's juz. What is the name of the man according to many books of tafsir who is the warner in Surah Yasin? So go ahead and answer below inshaAllah ta'ala. And uh, ta'ala, keep on engaging. Dear brothers and sisters, we're in the 23rd night now. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept these last 10 nights from us to accept Ramadan from us to make us amongst those who observe Laylatul Qadr. It's an odd night. And of course, when the blessed 10 nights, I want to remind you, inshallah ta'ala, to please donate to Yaqeen. You can, inshallah ta'ala, use the link below. You can still automate what's left of the last 10 nights, or you can give specifically on this night, hoping that it's Laylatul Qadr, ta'ala, but we're counting on you for your support, inshallah ta'ala. Again, match what you did last year and more, bi'ithnillahi ta'ala, if you can. And we hope that you've been benefiting, bi'ithnillahi ta'ala. We're here, of course, we got Sheikh Abdullah Duru, as always. Sheikh Abdurrahman Karie, the smiling imam, mashallah. You know, mashallah. Some people called me the smiling imam until your smile came around and just outshined, <laughs> outshined my smile altogether, man. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, Allah yabarak alaykum. Jazakallah khair, Yaqeen Institute for having us again on 30 for 30, 23rd night, Allahu Akbar. Uh, it's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, you know, this program uh, is continuing and, you know, this time now in person. Alhamdulillah. Allah Akbar. Alhamdulillah. To be in Alhamdulillah. the same place. Allah uh, Allah khair for having us and being part of this program. Sheikh, the audience has a bone to pick with you though. Uh-oh. <laughs> Here's what it is. You told me my Somali was good. It was so the, good. The, what I did last year with the Somali and, you know, I tried it out. Uh, oh. You know, some people said, Sheikh Yasser Bajaj said it sounded like Urdu. <laughs> <laughs> Which kind of hurt my feelings, you know. But you she got, said it was good. You got the American version of a Somali. Okay. So, All right. so yeah, you gave a, me, you taught me Somali. Yeah. So yeah. To the audience, so go if I to do like good, original, you know, if I do good, it's from me, and if I do bad, then it's <laughs> Sheikh Abdul Rahman's fault, you know, <laughs> which will tie into the just. <laughs> let, let, let me help. How, how is this? How is this? Say <clears> it. <throat> Oh, mashallah. So you, see, you, know, you see how it is? Why are you so... Mashallah. It's the roots, Chef. The roots are there. Why are you so angry when you said it, though, man? You're no, you, supposed you, to ask you, how you're doing, man. No, that's how much I miss him. Oh, okay. mashallah. 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 I want to know his name. Mashallah. Chef, do you want to throw out you know... No, no, no. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go... We're going to wait till... Uh, I've got I've, I've got a su- so surprise. I'll save it, save it for the, you know... For the special, a Sheikh Yasser Bajas has to be next to me. So Allah it's, Akbar. So it's, it's, part of, it's part of what makes it special. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. It's beautiful Allah to have you. Taib, with that, dear brothers and sisters, let's go ahead and get started. Inshallah. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Salatu salam. Rasulullah. Wa ala anihi wa sahbihi man wala. So at the end of Juz 22, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to us about a group of people that fail to hold themselves accountable and on the day of judgment they're shifting blame. Now Allah talks about a very specific group of people. وَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّا أَطَعْنَا سَادَاتَنَا وَكُبَرَاءَنَا فَضَلُّونَ السَّبِيلَ Oh Allah, we just followed our leaders. We just followed the trendsetters. We just did what the spokespeople were doing and we went ahead and did what they did so we can't be accountable. They led us astray from your way. And at that point, رَبَّنَا آتِهِمْ ضَعْفَيْنِ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ وَلْعَنْهُمْ لَعْنًا كَبِيرًا Oh Allah, our Lord doubled their punishment, punished them twice as badly, and condemned them with a severe condemnation. Punished them because they got us to this situation. They led us to this situation. Now, subhanAllah, there's something here that Allah Azza wa is showing us that indeed, the evil leaders and trendsetters will be punished twice as much. They will face the consequence of having been astray themselves and leading others astray, but the blame is still on those who followed. And there's something here about accountability, the failure of self-accountability. The majority of people, according to the Qur'an, the majority of people fail to hold themselves accountable and merely go with the flow, right? There's the mala and the jumhur. 
There are the leaders and then there are the followers. The majority of humanity simply looks to what the leaders are doing and follows along with that. And that's a warning to us to be accountable for our own sins. But then there's a smaller group of people. And this group of people, not only do they fail to hold themselves accountable in regards to their sins and in regards to the hereafter, they actually blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for their failures in this life and they refuse to clean up their own messes and how that affects other people. And so this is what I want to talk about today because it deeply relates to Qadr. It is uh, verse 47, Surah Yasin. So we're still in Yasin, but we're at the part that comes into the 23rd juz where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ أَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقَكُمُ اللَّهِ When it is said to them, spend from what Allah has provided for you. قَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنُطْعِمُوا مَنْ لَوْ يَشَاءُ اللَّهُ أَطْعَمَ You mean you want us to feed those that if Allah wanted to, He would have fed them? Mm. SubhanAllah, so they neither acknowledge that Allah fed them in the first place, mm. nor do they want to feed the people they've neglected. So they have created systems of poverty, systems of disparity, made it such that only a few elite people are able to have concentrated wealth amongst themselves, are rejecting Allah so that they can hold on to that wealth, and now they're blaming Allah for the poverty in their societies, and they're mocking, in antum illa fi dhalal al Allah says, what clear error you are in. This is a mindset, dear brothers and sisters, that when someone fails to hold themselves accountable for their own personal sins, they are unable to see the consequences of those sins in the hereafter, and they don't care about the consequences of their sins in this world. And when do they bring God into the equation? Not from the place of, oh Allah, you provided for me and so I should humble myself and provide for others. To the point that when I give charity, I don't see myself as giving charity. I just see myself as the chosen vehicle by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed that sustenance for that person. And I'm grateful that Allah azza wa jalla put me in that position. That's not the way they see it. They see it as, I got this wealth and I'm gonna hoard this wealth and this God that you talk about, let him figure that out. Let him figure that out, right? And you know, subhanAllah, when, when we talk about the question of evil in the world, right? Why, is there, why are there so many hungry people in the world? Why is this happening? You can see it clearly in Gaza, the starvation in Gaza, right? This is man-made disaster. Sometimes it's not as obvious as what's happening in Gaza. And subhanAllah, you know, we look at, and Sheikh Abdul Rahman does a lot of work there, the Horn of Africa. Mm. That's a man-made issue, yeah. right? We have enough food in the world for everyone to be fed, you know, for everyone to have, to have their water, to have their share. But there are a few people that hoard it. And that's when you bring God into the equation, when you say, well, if God wanted to, God would have solved this problem of evil. No, no. Ask yourselves, those of you that caused evil, that spread corruption on the earth, why are you failing to be accountable for your own sins? And for how those sins have affected other people? This is the sin of your negligence in front of you. So we ask Allah to protect us from mm -hmm. failing to be accountable for our own personal sins and failing to be accountable for the consequences of those sins on everyone around us, on the world around us. The believer is worried. Wallahi, the believer should worry when you see what's happening to your brothers and sisters anywhere in the world. Is this the personal sin that I'm committing that's bringing about pain on the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? That's the extent <clears throat> to which the believer should be worried. But we take lessons from the arrogant here that don't see any of that, right? That see things completely opposite. And it starts from not recognizing the source of their blessings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you know Allah is the source of your blessing, then you seek to be a blessing to others, knowing that even that is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us amongst those who are humble and grateful mm -hmm. and giving, not those who are sinful, unaccountable, and hoarding. Allahumma ameen. Shaykh Abdullah, tawadah. Hayakum Allah, bayyakum, barakallahu fikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. I like how he mentioned how when you see the blessings, that in and of itself is a blessing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving you the faculties and using them correctly from your heart, from your mind, from your soul, from your, your nafs and controlling it. Your, the part of you that may want you that, to embark, embark upon those desires that may not be good for you, but rather you choose to go to the nafs wa mutma'inna, the tranquil soul, because you have done actions of submission. You have voluntarily chosen to worship your creator in the different ways that he has furnished for us. I want to talk about one that was close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a matter of fact, he was termed Khalilullah. He was termed as a close friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is none other than Ibrahim alayhi salam. In the chapter of Safat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests him. As we see Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was, one, he was from our prophets, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him in a way 
that none of us would want to even face. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, after a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim in chapter number, uh, the chapter of Safat, verse number 102, when he speaks about how he blessed him with the son Ismail, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a portion of the story when he says, talks about Ismail, and he says, فَلَمَّا بَلْغَ مَعَهُ السَّعِيَ قَالَ يَا بُنَيَّ إِنِّي أَرَى فِي الْمَنَامِ أَنِّي أَذْبَحُكَ فَانْظُرْ مَاذَا تَرَى قَالَ يَا أَبَتْ فَعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرْ سَتَجِدُنِي إِنشَاءَاللَّهُ مِنَ الصَّابِرِينَ Well, this is a very important verse for us as Muslims, but particularly fathers and sons, and mothers as well, indirectly. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about here, he says that for when, when he was old enough to go about and work with him, meaning when Ismail reached the age of being old enough to go and work with his father, Sa'i, yani to go meshi, or to go to a certain place or to move on. So when he reached that age of being able to go with his father, and this is important here, when our children reach a certain age, it is time to where our fathers particularly, we take our sons and we teach them how to be a man. We teach them how to live on this earth because you will be responsible one day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when he reached that age, Ibrahim says to him, قَالَ يَا بُنَيْ إِنِّي أَرَى فِي الْمَنَامِ أَنِّي أَذْبَحُكَ Ibrahim tells his son, I saw in my dream that I was ordered to sacrifice you, that I was ordered to slaughter you. What is his son's response? Firstly, Ibrahim saw in a dream, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that when they, the, the prophets see in a dream can be revelation. So when Ibrahim saw this in a dream, he shared it with his mature son, Ismail, mm. which is very interesting. He shared a reality of life with him. So Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam told, told his son uh, that verily I see in a dream that I was ordered to slaughter you. And what was Ismail's response? Qala ya abatif al ma tu'mar, satajiduni insha'allahu. Ismail responded, Oh my father, do what you have been ordered. You will find me of the patient. So it is interesting here because Ismail says, If al ma tu'mar, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. I trust you because you are my father. As a matter of fact, you are a prophet. Do whatever you, it is you have been ordered, for you will find me of the patient. Fathers, it is very important that to know that our children are looking at us. Our sons are looking at us. Whether you like it or not, whatever you do in the house, they're going to see that, particularly at a, at a young age, to maybe think that that is right, or that is the right way to, to live a masculine life as a father, as a husband. So here he says, do, at, do whatever it is you were ordered to do, you will find me of the patient. Are we patient with our parents? To know that they love us, and sometimes the way what they may instruct us to do or ask us to do, it may not be in our best interest as a, as a youth. Or sometimes, subhanAllah, it may not be what Allah wants. But it's important for us to be patient with them in calling them to good. And parents, it's important for us to be patient with our children, especially at that age of puberty when they're growing and they're changing, to call them to good with patience. But Ismail says here, you will find me of the patient. But the next verse is a verse that's very, very important, which coincides with, with what was just mentioned. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَا وَتَلَّهُ لِلْجَبِينِ And when they both submitted, and Ibrahim flung the sun down to, on his forehead. They, some say that he put Ismail down on his side or put him on his jubha, on his face, and he was about to sacrifice him. Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing here that the father was with the son when he reached the age of going out with him. He shared with him something and Ismail responded in a fashion of an obedient son. But Allah says, فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَا When they both submitted. Because Ibrahim submitted to the message and he was honest, and Ismail submitted to the message as well by submitting and obeying his father. This verse is so beautiful because it shows the relationship of what we can term as rites of passage. How is it when the boy transitions from being a boy to a man and how the father deals with it appropriately and the response of the son of being patient? And all of this ties into the predestination of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we don't know what is in plan for us it's up to us to fulfill that responsibility that Allah has given us the aman of the trust. Mm -hmm. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us those mm -hmm. that are obedient to his message mm -hmm. and allow us to follow it in the best way. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh Omar Suleiman and Shaykh Abdullah. These, you know, two areas that the Mashaykh covered in this juz, in juz 23, uh, subhanAllah is 
a very powerful juz of the Quran that reflects on two important matters that the shuyukh covered. One is the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who deny the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Throughout this juz, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is establishing his uh, lordship, his rububiyyah, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides sustenance for us. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout this juz is mentioning the stories of the messengers, how Allah sent these messengers as a means of guidance, as an establishment of their prophethood and their message uh, that they were sent as messengers. When Allah establishes these two concepts throughout this juz and brings all these evidences, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Zumar verse 22, Allah says, أَفَمَنْ شَرَحَ اللَّهُ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ فَهُوَ عَلَى نُورٍ مِّنْ رَبِّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says that all of this proof that you just read throughout this juz, all of these verses that you heard, the stories that you heard, the stories of Ayyub, the story of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, what is Allah telling us? أَفَمَنْ شَرَحَ اللَّهُ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ is the one who we cause the hearts to open the, to Islam, that we have eased for them to accept the message of Islam, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a sense of comfort and joy when the message of Islam arrives to them. When all of this evidence has been established, the sense of accepting what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed. And the scholars, they say there is an inward and outward approach to this ayah. The inward is that among ourselves, those who have accepted Islam as our, as our deen, and we say, رَضِيتُ بِاللَّهِ رَبَّ وَبِالْإِسْلَامِ دِينَ وَبِمُحَمَّدْ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ نَبِيَّ We say we are pleased with Allah as our Lord. We say Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is our messenger. And we say Al-Islam is our deen. How do we accept what Allah has prescribed upon us? When we see the commandments of Allah, do we accept it wholeheartedly and submit like how Ibrahim Alayhi Salatu Wasalam submitted to the commandment of Allah? How Ismail submitted to the commandment of Allah? In Sharah Al-Sadr comes inwardly and outwardly for those people who hear the message of Islam Throughout this you know, in situation, we've been seeing the genocide in Gaza, the, uh, the resilience of our brothers and sisters uh, in, in Palestine, that people are seeing that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is causing the hearts to open in Sharah al-Sadr. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you know, was asked, what is in Sharah al-Sadr? What is the, that which causes the heart to become open? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that, the heart that is open is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala casts light into the heart and causes it to expand and you feel ease. So the Sahaba, when they heard this, they said, Ya Rasulullah, فَهَلْ لِذَلِكَ أَمَارَةٌ يُعْرَفُ بِهَا He said, is there signs that indicate the, uh, you know, the openness of the heart? And the Prophet ﷺ said three things. الْإِنَابَةُ إِلَى دَارِ الْخُلُودِ He said, it is long, longing passionately for the eternal home. And then he says, what tajafi an daril ghurur, to be, you know, distant and seeking refuge from this deceptive worldly life that we live in. Wal istiadadu lil mauti qabl al nuzul, and to prepare oneself for death before Allah. its arrival. Allah. He said, this is what in Sharah al Sadr is. Allah. And on the opposite side, Allah condemns those people. He says, fawailun lil qasiyati qulubuhum. He says, those who have no humanity in their heart, who saw the genocide in Gaza, who saw the situation, Allah took the rahmah from their heart, their humanity from their heart. That no matter what you tell them, the evidences, the proof come, they cannot accept this. So Allah causes their heart to become hardened. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from Amen. such things. But this is the beauty of just this ayah, how Allah concludes this entire juz. Jazakumullah khair wa sallallahu wa sallam. Jazakumullah khair, Shaykh Abdurrahman. What a beautiful... Hadith, what a beautiful hadith, subhanAllah, because there is no softening of the heart without the reminder of the hereafter. Mm. You know, when I, when I teach Riqaq uh, from uh, Sahih al-Bukhari, mm. the book of uh, heart softeners from al-Bukhari, mm. one of the things that I mentioned when I teach Riqaq, al raqaiq in general, when you talk about the heart softeners, Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah, when you read the chapter of heart softeners, there's like not a single hadith about the heart. Oh, it's all about the akhirah. And his whole point was that and Al-Bukhari, of course, was a genius in, mm. in, his, in his organizing of the abwab, of the mm. chapters in the books of hadith. 
his whole point was to say that if you know the hereafter mm -hmm. and you know death yeah. and you know what comes after and you connect yourself to that, then the heart will be softened. That, mm -hmm. that is the idaj, that is the diagnosis and that is the cure mm -hmm. for a diseased heart. So okay. there's no ahadith about the heart there. It's all about looking that towards the hereafter. Mm -hmm. The whole book of heart softeners yeah. from mm -hmm. Imam Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala. So it's, it's profound. And one thing that I connect that to I mean, whose heart was open to Islam like Ismail alayhi salam? Mm, One of the most painful episodes, but it's hopeful because we know the end. Mm. It's hopeful, like that's the thing, like the, the, the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam when he's sacrificing him, like man, like what if I had to be in that situation before I knew what was coming? Yeah. Right, yeah. that's where, like now we can read it and we can say, okay, alhamdulillah, we know but where being it went. in that situation. But when you're in that situation, Something that stuck out to me mm. when you were speaking, Shaykh. Number one, uh, Ya Abati, Ya Abati. Mm. Ibrahim once spoke to his father and said, Oh, my beloved mm. father. Mm. And tried to call him to Islam, but his heart was so closed off to Islam mm. that his father responded to his son saying, Ya Abati, I love you. His father responded by trying to kill him. Mm. And here, can you imagine the pain of Ibrahim Islam when he has this married Islam and he's putting him on the ground and he's saying, Ya Abati, mm. oh, my dear father, but he's saying it with, this, with the honor of, to of him. acceptance. Yeah, yeah, That's Abati, wrong. yeah, Abati. Like, I once spoke to my dad and he tried to kill me, and now my son is saying, Yeah, Abati to me, and I have to kill him. Like, this is so difficult, subhanAllah. But here's the thing if Alma tu'mar, what you were commanded to do, and that's also the part of like your heart being open to Islam. So, uh, this also immediately excludes because someone might see this and say, Wait, are you saying like my parents can abuse me and mm -hmm. they can command me to do things against Islam and they can hurt and and that's all sanctioned by Islam? No, because both of them were submitting to Allah. Mm -hmm. And the Prophet said, La ta'atani makhluq fi al khalaq. Mm -hmm. You can't obey a creation and disobeying the Creator. So this is different. Ismail is a Prophet of Allah, he's a Nabi. And mm -hmm. his father is a Prophet of Allah, he's a Nabi, a, a Rasul. They know that this is coming from Allah. So they're submitting themselves to Allah's mm -hmm. command. Mm -hmm. And that was what Hajar said to Ibrahim. Did Allah command you to do this? If Allah did, commanded you, then it's good. Mm -hmm. So it's actually the opposite of mm -hmm. what someone would, would see as a very worldly manifestation of abuse, right? And harm and, and hardship. It's the opposite. It's because they both knew, and, and you know, there are some people, subhanAllah, who are the opposite of man sharah Allah sadrahu to Islam. Honestly, like, and I say this not mockingly, but, but um, disappointed sometimes when like they were, and, and disgusted to be honest. Mm. People that speak bad about Ibrahim Islam and they say, oh, you know, he neglected Hajar and he tried yeah, to kill us, yeah. like like taking away from, like, no, no, this was all Allah's scheme and divine plan mm -hmm. for them and they knew it. And it's not just divine plan that was unknown to them, it was divine command that was known to them. We're dealing with the Qadr of Allah, yeah, exactly. which is we're trusting divine plan while following the, the orders of the Prophet so These people were dealing with divine command, mm. follow the divine command and trust the divine plan, even if the divine command for you does not have the hikmah obviously available to you in the moment, the wisdom mm. available to you in the moment. So it's just, it's the pain of the moment for Ibrahim sacrificing Ismail, like that's submission to Qadr. Yeah. Ismail is submitting to Qadr, mm. but they're submitting to Wahi before Qadr. And those, mm. those two mm. things are never in contradiction wow, that's powerful. with each other. And so that's where we have to also learn to submit to Wahi mm. and trust the Qadr that comes as a result of submission to Wahi, mm. right? Mm. And the submitting of, to the way of the Prophet Sallallahu And that's, your heart is open to Islam. Alhamdulillah, I'm good, mm. right? Like I, I, I turn it back to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. You know, it's so beautiful you mentioned that because, you know, both of the times Ya Abati were said, firstly, the righteous son, Allah bless him with the righteous son because of his righteousness. But then the first time, the Ya Abati was said to a father that's trying to kill him because of an evil intention. The second time, the son is saying Ya Abati to someone, Allah ordered him to kill him as a test because of his good intention. Mm. You see, Allah, it's interesting when you see the connection, the correlation with, with Ibrahim alayhi salam, his father and his son. Mm. But when you're the righteous son and you try your best and you're the father as well, and you're around your son and teaching him, Ibrahim was with his son Ismail as well, when he was building the Kaaba, Rabbana, teaching him how to call on Allah while working mm. at the same time. So just seeing the correlation that you brought forth is subhanAllah, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. Episode four of the Ramadan series, by the way. Mm. Oh, really? series. Yeah. Episode four is family. <laughs> so, you, some you, people you, have bad fathers, bad mothers. Yeah, we, we actually talk about this, subhanAllah. Mm. Your parents teach you mm. and you, can ma you should manifest the best of your parents. Mm and manifest if you, you know, what you wish you would have seen from your parents mm. in some cases. It's very important. So Ibrahim channeled to his son, 
Ismail what he didn't get from his father, mm. right? So sometimes, so, so, you know, by the way, we talked about not being accountable. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes people blame everything on their parents. It's, it's, it's all the influence. I'm like this because of them. I'm like this because of my friends. I'm, I, I grew up in this environment. I had nothing to do with it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's constant, right? And that leads you to victimize others and hurt others, right? If anyone would have had an excuse to be a bad father, it would have been someone with a horrible father. I mean, whose mm-hmm. father threw him into a fire? Allah. Humiliated him despite Allah. the best intentions, Allah. right, from him. So Ibrahim didn't use that as an excuse. Mm-hmm. An amazing father Allah. to his children. Ibrahim, 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 a merciful father, kind, loving father to his children. So we talk about that in the Qadr series because one of the questions, it's the easiest excuse. Mm-hmm. My family's like this. Mm-hmm. I had no choice. I mean, mm-hmm. I came in... Or, or, you know, I'm from this culture, I'm from that culture, I'm from, you know, this is how we are, right? Or yeah. this is, these are my circumstances. No, no, be accountable. Be accountable and submit to the, to the wahi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the, the qadr just will come in a way that your heart will always be at ease with it. Because you know that there is no qadr that comes with amr except that it's khair. No mm-hmm. co- divine decree that comes with following the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except that there is goodness that will come out of it. Subhanallah. Any last words, dear Mashaykh? Oh, not that I'm like sacrificing. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I realize it sounds bad. Last words. You know? <laughs> no, no. Like any any final. Obviously, you know. Yeah, Thirty think, seconds I, a minute. Your take home message. Inshallah. I think the take home message is that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala created us, and He knows what's best for us, mm-hmm. and willingly accepting what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala commands us because it's in our best interest. Yeah. And this is what we learned from the story of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, and the story of Ayub. In Surah Sad, mm. abd innahu awab. You know, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He was the best of Allah's creation. And inshallah, Sadr is submitting wholeheartedly without mm. even knowing the, 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 the end result of that uh, decision mm. when, we, when we submit to the commandment of Allah. Jazakumullah khairan, Mashaykh. Yeah, really beautiful. So, dear brothers and sisters, you know, obviously. Rise to the occasion, inshallah, 23rd night, uh, inshallah ta'ala, we, we all are amongst those who are accepted in these blessed nights. Uh, again, we want to remind you, inshallah ta'ala, to, to give, inshallah ta'ala, not just to yaqeen, to the multiple noble causes that are out there, especially to your brothers and sisters that are uh, oppressed and harmed in Gaza and elsewhere. Amen. Be generous, inshallah ta'ala, and submit yourself to the divine command. And bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, if Laylatul Qadr is tonight, and of course it's in one of these last 10 nights, your qadr will only be good if you sure. submit yourself bi dhnillahi ta'ala to the amr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Barakallahu feekum, we'll see you all tomorrow, inshallah. Shaykh Abdul Rahman, Zakallah khair, Dar al Farooq. I forgot to mention the masjid in the beginning, Dar al Farooq, with our beloved Shaykh as well, Shaykh Walid al Manisi, Hafidullah ta'ala. May Allah bless you all in the work you're doing. We'll see you all tomorrow, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.